everybody, Marmalade here for Q&A number 13. So let's get going right away on this. Got some good questions this time. So my first question is from Gail Walker. She had asked me, I know you don't use a tarp, but what's your opinion on them? Uh, maybe you know of other people's experiences or opinions. Uh, would you use one to keep your base weight down? So that's exactly why I use it. Um, I have one. I'm going to show you a couple pictures right now of one that I have that I've tried on one weekend trip about two years ago. So uh, check out these pictures right here. Now those pictures are showing it set up in different ways. Uh, you definitely, that one is, the one I have is I think eight feet by 12. And um, it's for minimalism. I've, I've seen it out there, the ultralight backpackers that are crazy light, like eight pounds base weight with everything they have. I mean, they, they just literally carry a piece of plastic as their ground sheet and uh, have, have a tarp. Now it's not for me. I think if you're in summer conditions and it's not buggy, it's great because it's simple to set up. Uh, you can set it up a lower uh, like you saw in the pictures if you have wind or snow or rain things like that But you are completely exposed. You have no netting um, If you cowboy camp a lot you need a tarp uh, That's what people do a lot of times when they're going light is they'll cowboy camp a lot where they don't need a tent But they have the tarp as a backup it folds up into nothing I don't know the weight of mine But I can guarantee you it's probably under a pound even with the guy lines that tie off onto stakes so you just need to carry the tarp with the guy lines and uh, I would say eight to 10 stakes and that's probably about it. So it's probably about a pound with the stakes. Um, yeah, so, but I, I saw some people really struggle on the trail this year with it. When the weather gets bad, you are kind of screwed because you can't uh, completely enclose yourself all the way from the weather. You can angle it so that, you know, the, if the wind or rain or something's coming away, you can kind of have it hit the side. But um, yeah, I just saw a lot of people, uh, you know, I would say for 80% of the time on the trail, it's fine. But when it gets buggy, you have no respite. They have to literally get in their in their uh, sleeping bag and then wear a bug net, a mosquito net, head net at night just to keep the bugs off their face. So to me, it's too much of a pain. I want to be comfortable and sleep well. So for me, uh, it's kind of a novel idea and maybe I'll use it once in a while when I feel like it on the desert when it's not buggy and the weather's nice at night. But for the most part, it's not for me. All right, so our next question is from Felipe Ricketts and he had asked me, I have hiked a lot in Luna Sandals. Uh, my feet feel less tired than if I'm wearing shoes. Uh, what are your thoughts about wearing sandals instead of shoes? Uh, in the future, I'll start hiking and carrying both so I can switch off. So uh, on the PCT, uh, the, the minimalists only bring their hiking shoes, but most people have camp shoes or town shoes. I had flip-flops. I also brought, I'm wearing right now actually, but a, kind of a Roman sandal with it around the back of my legs because I thought, well, they'd be great for water crossings. But when it came down to it, when I came to areas where there's lots of water, I didn't want to take the time. Uh, I, wear, I not only wear a darn tough sock, but I wear Njinji toe socks to go around each toe. So like um, when, I, when it got to real life uh, hiking on the trail, I didn't want to take off my sock, uh, both pairs of socks, my gaiter, my shoe, um, both feet, and then put my uh, sandals on and go across the 30 foot wide stream and then put them all back on. And sometimes you have multiple. I mean, when we went through the Mission Creek where the trail was washed out uh, above uh, Palm Springs, we crossed, uh, Bart and I crossed the water 30, 40 times. So there's just, it's just too time consuming. So my shoes actually became just town shoes. So I'm gonna actually go thinner, smaller, and lighter. Mine were light, but uh, they were just kind of big and bulky. So I'm gonna go actually lighter and smaller and uh, minimalize it. To answer your question about sandals, some people do do it and they do, uh, there's a few people that try to primarily hike in the sandals the whole time and I don't know how you do it. If you saw how rough and hard and rocky and, and stickers and everything there is on the trail, it would just thrash your feet. The people I saw, a couple people trying to hike the whole trail in sandals, their feet were thrashed. Not to mention black and filthy. Also your feet dry out and get cracked and then you start bleeding. Um, when I broke my ankle, I don't know if you guys will remember if you've watched my through hike, but I broke my ankle and I had, I had to hike out 75 miles on my ankle to get out of there to uh, Stevens Pass. Uh, I was, uh, my buddy Juicy and No-No and a couple other people and Machine were catching up to me uh, that was going to be my tramley that I was going to hike with. But, uh, they caught up to me the two days after I got hurt, but I couldn't keep up with them, so I, I couldn't uh, hike with them. I hung out with them in uh, Snoqualmie, why, um, excuse me, Skykomish, why I healed up, but I didn't ever heal. But uh, No No, and I don't know if No No, if you watched this, but No No uh, started wearing her sandals because they were more comfortable, and um, she ended up uh, tearing like her baby toe up. 
and then I don't know if she broke it or tore it up, but it bled and then it got infected and she had to get off trail. So there's a lot of things that can happen when you wear sandals. So to answer your question, I think that's, that's um, personal preference, but I would never do it. I want the support and the protection. You walk over so much stuff and I can't imagine getting between rocks and getting your toes caught in all kinds of rocks and roots and boulders and things like that. So uh, I brought sandals, they were for the town and that's it. Okay, my next question is from Andrew Bruce and uh, he's from Australia, great guy, I hear from him a lot. He said, what is the best way to get to the trailhead at Campo? So this is a question I get asked a lot and everybody, I live in San Diego so I know about it and I know it's not that hard but when you're not from somewhere, especially another country, you have no clue. Like if I went to Australia to get on the trail, I'd have no idea what to do, so I get it. Um, so my friend Robert, uh, you might have seen him, Robot, Robot in the Wild. Uh, Robert and I Robin and I are gonna, uh, since we live here, we're gonna put together a video that I think will help all the through hikers this year and future hikers on, on some of the resources and where to go and how long it takes, maybe what it costs. We're gonna try to show you like how to get to the trail, but really there is a bus and uh, like I said, we're gonna research this. There's a bus, but I think one of the negatives is some of the hikers say it gets there in the afternoon in Campo, so uh, you don't get to start in the morning, but what some people do is just get there in the afternoon you can camp in town. There's a couple places to let you camp during the hiking season uh, behind a couple buildings. You can camp and then you would walk about a mile to the terminus. So you may do that and just take the bus in from San Diego and it's cheap. You could do an Uber or Lyft. It would, I would say it's an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. So it'd be kind of expensive, but you can get there and maybe you split it with some other hikers. So uh, especially if you're foreigners and you're, and you're hiking on the same day, maybe you connect and then uh, you know go to the trail together. But we're gonna put, uh, there's also scout and photos, but this is their last year, if you know anything about them, of hosting in San Diego, and they always take you to the trailhead, but this is their last year and then they're done. So, um, yeah, so we're gonna do some research and try to show you exactly what you can do to get you to the trail. So, uh, and that's not to mention trail angels in the area too. So, but anyway, look for that video. Okay, so my next question is from uh, Terry Savini, and she said, uh, how did it readjust to real life after my hike? How hard was it to get back to work and be more and be more sedimentary. So this is a real thing. I mean, I haven't seen the book, but I know there's a book called How Through Hiking Ruined My Life, but it really does in a good way. But, um, you know, when we go to, the, to trail towns, you'll get a lift from a car, this and that, but everything s slows down and is quiet on the trail. And that is honestly the purpose why you're out there. But yeah, but it's weird. I mean, I live in the San Diego area and um, my second job is Uber Lyft that I did to raise money. I do Uber Lyft on the side. So uh, I'm used to driving, but it's weird. I was on trail for what, a couple months? I come back and everything was loud, fast. Uh, people are stressing out and rushing. And um, you know, when you're mired in it, depending on where you live and where you're from, you just get acclimated to it, you're used to it. But you really notice it when you come back. Like I've been back uh, uh, since when I got hurt, uh, July. So I've uh, readjusted. I got to uh, not have to work right away a real job because I had a real job plus the uh, Uber and Lyft and I quit my real job to go on my hike. But I got lucky because when I came back, I had to heal from my broken ankle and that took a couple months. And it was my left foot, my non-driving foot, so, and my car's an automatic. So I was able to do Uber and Lyft and just float myself financially, plus I had savings from my hike, uh, and just let my ankle heal, but also not have to go work a real job. Now I have a real job and I have the Uber and Lyft and you know, I'm like starting to work towards you know, updating some of my gear, but also uh, you know, saving up to go on and to finish my hike. So. Um, to answer your question, Terry, it was, it's really hard. It still is hard. I mean, it's just hard to explain to you whether you do 200 miles on the trail or you do the whole thing. It changes you and um, you realize how good it is for your soul, you know, physically and mentally and emotionally. It just does something to you. All right, our last question is from Bobby Gator. Uh, he said, what was your base weight? So I don't know exactly because I don't have the scale, but I knew when I was doing my, uh, there's a site and um, I'll put it down below what it's called because I just blanked out but it's where you put all your gear in and uh, it adds it up for you. Um, I think when I'm doing the last couple things, I was kind of heavy at like 16 pound base weight. Uh, and half my stuff was ultralight, so that means I had some heavy stuff, but I do have to carry extra batteries, cables, things like that, wall plugs to charge all my stuff for, for blogging. And a lot of other people don't do that. They just literally have their phone and a phone charger and that's all they carry. So, and I have a tripod and a selfie stick thing for when I do my intro in the morning and all that. So I carry a lot more stuff like that, but 16 pounds is, is just considered light. It's not ultra light, but it's not heavy. There's people heavier, but I am telling you, although I thought I knew knew it, your weight 
of your pack matters. It just matters. And you don't want to scrimp and not bring things you need. But uh, I've already lightened half by quite a bit, half my gear. And uh, I'm going to be going over those, showing what I have, what I have now, how much I saved, the difference. Uh, things are getting in my pack lighter and smaller. So I think I can actually go to a, I have a pretty big pack. And so I've, I think once my things are smaller and lighter, I'm actually going to go to maybe the same pack, but the smaller version of it. And uh, that'll save like another pound from the pack weight itself. So uh, I'm going that way and I'm telling you, maybe it's because I'm in my 50s, but the weight of your pack matters. So don't bring a bunch of stuff. I mean, you can always send it back, which I did. I thought I had it dialed in. I sent two, three, four pounds back at, after I started. But it's really, really important. Bring what you need, but be smart. You know, have things that are multifunction, not one thing that you wear once every month or something. It's just a waste. You don't need it for that, for that one time, uh, if that's the case. Uh, so I learned a lot. Um, sometimes you just have to be out there to know it. Uh, the weight really matters to answer your question. So I'm going lighter, smaller. I want to enjoy my hike even more. Uh, when I hiked with Bart, he picked up, he's super ultra light. He picked up my pack and he was like, oh my God, you're carrying this thing up and down mountains. And I'm like, what? So yeah, uh, I'm definitely going lighter and um, get the base weight down as low as you can, but bring what you need so you feel safe and you're comfortable. All right, guys, that wraps it up for another edition. This is number 13, number 13. Uh, that's pretty cool, a little over three months now. Uh, I still have a ton of questions that I'm trying to answer, but I need more. Give me some more uh, varied questions, whatever you're thinking about, you know, when it comes to clothing or weather or gear or give me the mental, emotional side of it, things like that. Uh, maybe, you know, I've been, I have some questions about like what did my friends and family think when I was hiking, things like that. Ask me anything you want to know. Give me the questions. And again, thank you for watching. It means a lot to me and I hope that I'm helping other people. This is how I learn by doing it and watching Q and A's like this. So I hope it's uh, helping you. Uh, again, just subscribe, like, and again, I have a Patreon account. Check it out. I'll put the link below and donate even a dollar a month, even if you want to do that. There's different tiers and you get different things from me depending on how much you, um, uh, you choose to support and become a patron. Uh, I'm getting ready to put a new video. Some of my videos will go up on uh, Patreon. They get things first before it goes up on my YouTube channel. So that's part of the perks of it. And I'm, getting, I'm working on one right now that's about to go up there. So uh, go check that out. Also, uh, my Marmalade logo that I had done is on there. I'm about to show it to the public now pretty soon, but uh, they got to see that first too and check it out and give me your feedback. And uh, for now, that's about it. Until next time, see you down the trail.